Um, okay. Hi, everyone. It's really nice to meet you. Okay. Um, my name is Alyssa Baltzer, and I am the Fine Art Collective Demonstration Artist from Montreal. And so I'm coming to you guys live from Montreal today uh, to give you this demo on Windsor and Newton Pro Markers. And also, we're going to have a quick look. My markers are getting away from me. Um, we're gonna have a quick peek as well at the Windsor Newton fine liner in tandem with that because the two work really well together. Um, in your kits, I think that you guys each have a canary yellow, a leaf green and a cerise. Um, these are all really lovely colors. I have got currently with me today and I'm gonna be pointing the camera towards these a little bit later on in case you don't have flowers handy at home. Um, a couple of pots of different flowers that you can draw from if you would like, but if you have a plant around the house or something on your balcony you wanna bring in, by all means, please do. You are welcome to draw your own plants too. That would be great. Um, okay, so without further ado, I'm just gonna do a little bit of housekeeping here. And I think for this part, might be backwards, we'll see. Um, so I just wanted to encourage you guys to follow us on Instagram. So I'm from the Fine Art Collective and there's lots of tips and tricks on there that are fantastic for markers, for any of the other products. Um, the Fine Art Collective is, is part of Call Art, which is a company that houses the sister companies of both Liquitex and Windsor and Newton. So you'll see different things from both of those places. So you can follow us at TFAC, T-F-A-C, T-F-A-C. Uh, NA, so the Fine Art Collective North America. Uh, also Above Ground is on there and they've got lots of fantastic stuff on their Instagram as well. So that's aboveground.to. And if you wanna follow me to see what I'm doing with some of these products, um, I'm Alyssa B underscore illustrations. Um, so yeah, please do feel free to follow any of us on Instagram uh, for more tips and tricks on how to use these things. So um, without further ado, I'm going to just do a quick intro on the Pro Markers. If you guys want to grab one and have one in hand so you can look at it while I'm talking to you about them, that would be great. Um, you guys have both the chisel tips and, nope, that's the wrong end. Hold on. I'm going to get this right. Uh, there we go. The chisel tips and the brushes in your kit. Um, I think your canary yellow might be a brush. Uh, your cerise is probably a chisel tip. Uh, each of these markers are double barreled markers, which means that they have a tip at both ends. So in this case, you've got the bullet nib on the one end and then the chisel tip on the other end. And in the case of the brush markers, one second here, some technical difficulties again with the lids. Um, in the case of the brush markers, you've got the chisel tip on the one end and then you've got the brush on the other end. Um, so you can make a variety of marks. We're gonna explore some mark making here in a little bit um, so that you can test out what some of the, the various nibs will do for you, what kinds of marks you can get out of them because you can get a lot of them. Um, so the ProMarker brand encompasses four variants. They are the original, the neons, the metallics, and then the brush, uh, the brush variant as opposed to the chisel slash bullet nib. Um, each of these is a little bit different. There are some colors that are available, for instance, in the metallics, only in the metallics or um, in the neons. Likewise, you'd get really bright colors, obviously. Um, they're all translucent. They are alcohol-based um, markers. So that means that they have an, an alcohol-based ink in them. Um, and the color dyes and the alcohol ensure any even dispersion as you're as you're moving your marker around on your page. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to avoid streaking, um, which is something none of us ever want to have in our <laughs> in our marker drawings. Um, so let's see here. Uh, a couple of things about the packaging. When you're looking at your packaging, you're going to notice. Uh, unless you get a kit, in which case the kit is all the same, so they aren't necessarily uh, marked, but you're going to notice that you have little icons to show you which end is which, so you know which is your chisel and which is your um, bullet nib, or conversely with the brush and the, the chisel, depending. You've got the name of your color. Now, honestly, like personally, I'm in love with some of these names. They're so lovely. Um, this one here is Canary Yellow or just canary in English, it's uh, can, canary, jaune canary in French. Um, 
So you know what you're getting. The nice thing about this is we recently changed the packaging. So before there were some slight discrepancies between the color you're seeing on the packaging and what you were getting out of your uh, pro marker. Now what you're seeing on the packaging is exactly the color you'll be getting out of your pro marker. So it's really quite clear what, what color you're getting. Um, Conversely, when you're looking at this, another thing to note, and on any art product really that you are using, just so that you're aware of it, is the AP, so this is the approved product listing, it is tested by a company down in the States that does this. Um, this means that this is safe for use, there are no real concerns with this at all. Um, on some of your products, like often with white paints or things like that, you'll see a CL, oops, that's upside down which means cautionary label. And if you see that, then you want to perhaps inform yourself about why that's there and what you as an artist need to do to work safely with that product. Um, all of these are AP, so we're safe and good to go. Um, okay. I'm also just gonna quickly speak to you about um, the fine liner that you have with you. So again, if you wanna pick up your fine liner and just open it up and have a look at it, You'll see that it's got a really beautiful um, spot where you're going to be holding it. I personally love this. I love working with fine liners. Um, these ones are really comfortable in the hand because of that. Uh, the design is really beautiful. This is a pigment marker. So unlike the alcohol based um, ink that we're working with in our markers today, this one is pigment. So it's very, very light fast. Um, and also quite opaque as you'll see. Um, the one thing I'm gonna tell you about this, that's important to know because of how we're gonna be working today is that, um, and again, if you're using these for watercolor, because I also like to use them when I'm doing watercolor, um, for the first little while that they go down on the page, you can still move them. So if you have a water brush or conversely, like we'll be doing today, you're working over top of it with a um, marker, you'll end up with some smudging. So you may wanna give it just a moment or two to dry on the page before you go in with your markers. And if you're working over top of the marker with this, no problem, you're fine. Um, so the one that we've got today is a 1.0. These come in um, sizes from 0.3 up to 1.0 and they're five different sizes. They come in different colors as well. Um, again, you can see we've got a really thick nib on ours today, but we're going to be able to get some different types of line work out of that. We're going to be able to play around with the um, thinness and thickness of the line we're working with. Um, and we'll be doing some of that with these as well. So these come in a wide range of colors. There's 148 translucent alcohol based uh, colors you can get with these. Uh, they are translucent, so they go really well over top of one or, an one or another. You can blend them. Um, I've got the blender here today. We'll look a little bit at things you can do with this. There's not one in your kit, but it's a good thing if you're going to do any amount of marker work. It's a good thing to pick one up just to um, allow you to get some interesting gradients and to play around with blending different, um, different things and also to get some subtle some more subtle colors out of the markers you already have. So we'll have a quick peek at that later on. Um, they layer well and a range of shades is available. So again, we're gonna look at this in a little bit, but if you take your marker, actually maybe we'll look at it now. Hold on here, guys. I'm going to switch cameras, just bear with me. So I'm going to remove my spotlight. I'm going to find my demo camera, here it is. And spotlight that for you, there we go, okay. Um, so, one second there. This is something I like to do when I'm starting to work with these. I like to just go down and try getting some color down on my paper. You guys have the bleed proof marker paper with you today, I believe that came in your kit. So that's what we'll be working on. It's a great paper. Um, again, it is bleed proof. So that's fantastic when you're working in markers because you really don't want the bleeding. Um, I like to go down and just put a little line of color down. So if you guys wanna get your different colors out and we'll test them out together. Oh, I'll remove these tulips later. There we go. Um, you can make notes about them. What I'd encourage you to do right now is just to try out some of the mark making capabilities. So you can see you can get a whole range of thin and thick lines do a little test in terms of like what kinds of textures visually you can get out of them, play around with them a little bit. Um, same for your 
your brush because the brush is a lot more flexible so you can get some really beautiful interesting um different kinds of marks out of that than you would out of your chisel for instance things that are a bit more fluid um the brush i find is really good if you're going to go around a line of some kind you can really just get in there easily with your brush um, because it allows you a little bit more give on the corners um, working into those marks that you'll be making so again what i'm going to recommend you do while you're trying these out is test them over top of one another have a look at the translucencies what happens with the different colors how do they intermingle um, just play around a little bit with that and see what range of colors you have with the different colors that are in your kit so i've got the canary yellow here now um, again if i want a slightly yellower uh green i can do that by just adding my canary yellow over top if i want something that's a bit more on the orange side i can create that by um layering my cerise and my canary yellow together to give me something that actually has quite a bit of depth to it in the end just by adding one layer after another of that and if you end up with a little bit of cerise on your canary yellow oh, that's not the right spot there we go like i just did you can just wipe it off on your page or on another page and that'll just bleed right out so don't worry about tainting your colors at all that's totally fine um so one second here without further ado and what i'm going to do for this part is i'm actually going to take the plants that i have here because today we're going to be drawing flowers together um and i'm going to point the camera at them so if you don't have flowers at home you can sketch the ones here they're all really lovely um i got an astrichum and i can't remember the name of this one but it's it's pretty neat as well so it's got some very interesting shapes and leaves um again something to keep in mind when you're drawing flowers it doesn't have to look exactly like flower chances of anyone ever seeing your flower and whatever flower you're drawing together are very slim <laughs> so it's a really stress a stress-free kind of situation um and as we know like just about anything can look like a flower in the end depending on how you draw it so um you can be really loose with your drawing style you can be a little bit tighter if you want all of those things are fine okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with a little activity here i'm going to show you what our final product will kind of look like where i'm going to take my fine liner so grab your fine liner guys and I'm going to take one of my colors and this piece I think I'm actually going to use in in my demo I've used the uh, the cerise but I'm going to use the leaf green today because I think it could be interesting. Um, we're going to do just a really quick sketch of some kind of contour of the flowers that are going on here that you like the looks of and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to demo for you how to put down a flat um, color around that in your negative space so it really makes um your sketch pop in an interesting way so if you're following along at home this is another example that i did um, as well so you can see it's really just a black and white uh contour sketch a bit more info in there um just gonna move this up a bit so i'm gonna just have a quick peek here at what is going on in my floral bouquet here in my two pots personally i really love those nasturtiums i think we'll move this camera down a bit closer as well so you can really see what's going on here um so i'm going to sketch my nasturtium that is just in bloom and again this doesn't have to be perfect you can always add extra layers into this later if you want to um again because it's translucent it's kind of neat to work over top of bits and pieces of things you can add to it um lots of interesting things you can do with this so if it doesn't come out quite perfectly at first don't worry about it add in some extra lines just play around with that and have fun okay
fascinating fun fact about nasturtiums is that, that I realized in the past year is that tiny bees will actually sleep in the, um, I don't know if you can see that there, they'll sleep in the tails of the, of the flowers at night, which is kind of neat. And then they come out in the mornings. Um, okay, so I've got my nasturtium there. I think that it's a little, And again, I'm being pretty loose with my um, composition here. I'm gonna add in one of the leaves, but I'm, and it's a smaller one that I'm drawing, but it's actually, I'm gonna change its scale because I think that it'll look neat with the composition I'm putting together. So again, feel free to play with this guys. Um, there's no real right or wrong here. We're just exploring with these markers to learn. Okay, so I'm gonna add in one last flower in behind here. I'm being pretty loose with my line work. I could be tighter if I wanted, or I could go even looser than this and it would still work. It'll still look interesting because when you um, play with the values by adding the uh, marker around the edges, it really makes the black and white line work you'll be doing look pretty interesting. Okay. And bring one, one more in there. Okay, and now I'm gonna take my green. Now something that, when I'm gonna work with this, something that you need to know is that the faster, you're not gonna to wanna to go super fast around the contours of your drawing, admittedly. You're probably, if you have a bullet tip on your green, you might wanna use the bullet tip for that. Um, but when you're doing the rest of the space around this, you're gonna be moving fast so that it stays as wet as possible. Feel free to go over top of it, uh, over top of your marks and just keep that really wet. Move fast, don't stop. It helps to avoid the streaking. So I'm getting in as close as I can to my edges, but I'm not, not worrying a whole lot about getting right in there right now. I'm really more worried about getting down a nice flat um, wash of the uh, alcohol-based ink so that it's not streaky. So you can see this page is pretty wet with that marker right now. Again, when I can get in around the contours, I do it but I'm not worrying a lot about it. Um, and then I'm gonna go around the entire drawing this way. Again, if you were doing this as something you were gonna give somebody, you could absolutely put a little frame around it and so that you knew where you were working out to. In my case, obviously I'm just kind of creating the shape as I go, but you could work in a much more contained an intentional sort of shape. And that would absolutely work. Okay, so I'm almost there. So now I'm going in and I'm just tidying up some of the little bits that I didn't quite get my marker into. There we go. Going around the edges just a little bit. Again, trying not to overlap some of the marks I've already made, if I can help it. Um, which in some cases I can't, but that's, uh, that's also okay. Filling in the spaces here. And so now you can see you've got this really interesting drawing out. Oh, I think that froze there. Um, wait for that to come back up. Just one second, guys. There we go. Okay, I think it's no, still not back and okay, perfect. So you can see that you've got this nice um, space where the darker values in your negative space and your sketch really pops because it's surrounded by that um, solid color. So this is one way to work with these. Um, the Second thing that we will look at is how to do sketches again with the 
um, fine liner and the markers. Before we do that, I think maybe we'll open it up to a couple of questions in case anybody has some questions so far. Please feel free to like unmic yourself and ask if you'd like. Do, do the alcohol ink pens work over acrylic paint? Yes, they would work over acrylic paint. Um, in terms of their holding power on acrylic paint, I'm not 100% certain, but they do work well over a lot of different surfaces. Um, like you can work on wood with them, you can work on glass with them, acetate, um, obviously paper and any number of other things. Um, and you could certainly try. I mean, what I would say, as, as with any art supplies, artists, we can kind of do whatever we want, but it's best to test it out first just to see in your studio before you work on something that's really important to you, how it works. So do a little bit of testing, try things out and see what you how you feel about it. What's its holding power? If you add water over top of it, does it stay? Um, yeah, just do some tests. And how do these compare to the watercolor uh, brush markers? Ah, that's a good question. So the watercolor brush markers and this are kind of, they're kind of like two different animals <laughs> in, in, the same, uh, in the same brand. So the watercolor markers um, have pigment in them. They really work kind of like a watercolor and at the same time as a marker. So you can pull a nice wash out of them when you're working over top of watercolor paper. Obviously the, the ground that you're gonna be working on will be different chances are than what we're working on here today. So you'll be on the watercolor paper probably or on a regular paper if you want. Um, whereas today we're working on a on a marker paper specifically. Um, watercolor markers, and I mean, I guess you could really go over top of watercolor with these if you wanted after the fact, but um, watercolor markers work well with watercolors also. So it's kind of neat to be able to combine those two things and get marker effects at the same time as you're using watercolor. I was wondering if you can use it on textile and do you need to heat set it? That's a good question. I don't have the answer to that, but if you want, please send me like a quick email or give me your uh, email address at the end of this demo and I will happily find out for you. I'll put it in the chat. Okay, great, thank you. Um, any other questions, guys? No? Okay, um, then without further ado, um, does anybody have any questions about this technique? Did some of you try it? Would you like to show? I'm gonna take the spotlight off here for a sec, just in case anybody feels like sharing their work. Long gallery. Okay. Oh, lovely, that's really nice. Good job, you guys. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Okay, without further ado, then I'm going to take this off of here. And the next technique we're gonna work with is, and I'll just put the spotlight on this again so you guys can see a bit better, one second. There we go, okay. Um, so we're gonna work at drawing with um, the fine liner and using the markers to add color to that. There's a lot of different ways and different kinds of depths you can get out of this by combining, again, you can get your darks by either combining your markers, um, like I was showing you before, by layering them. You can also get them by adding in fine line work with your fine liner. So this is one example. Um, of tulips that I did earlier in the spring. Again, this is a bromeliad that I have at the house. Um, there are actually quite a lot of different colors going on in the leaves here, um, as well as on the bromeliad itself. So you can really play around. Uh, if you want your lights in this, it's always a good idea to kind of think about where they're gonna be and leave them out if you can. Um, and if ever not, you could always go in with a little bit of a white crayon over top after the fact or white colored pencil or ponte, something like that to add in a bit of extra light. Okay, so without further ado, one second, I feel like I keep saying that, so sorry guys. <laughs> um, again, I'm going to just shuffle these around a bit because I think I'm gonna go for the nasturtium one more time. Here. I'll just bring that up in front of the camera for you guys. So you can see those a bit better. Um, 
And again, if you guys ever want to see this better, you can go up and hover over where the nasturtiums are. There should be three dots. Um, you should be able to press on the pin and then you'll see the flowers a bit more largely um, in full screen and a little bit less of what I'm doing in full screen, um, just in case you're, you want to work more on actual drawing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose my composition again. I'm gonna pick a flower and I'm gonna start sketching. And again, this can be pretty rough um, just to start. So I'm just looking for big shapes when I'm doing this. Um, but you get, again, like when you're thinking about it, flowers can be anything and you can really play with this. Um, they can be super loose like that. Um, they can be much more detailed as we all know, like botanical illustrations. So how you choose to um, work with this is up to you. So again, I'm just gonna come in here and get some of these beautiful um, bright orange leaves, yellowy orange leaves. Um, I'm not worrying too much about some of the color variations that are going on in this because I'm gonna try to create most of those using my markers instead of worrying about sketching the whole thing. And then I'll just get in again some of these leaves, paying attention to the negative space as much as possible. Um, there we go. And just add in a few guiding lines for myself here. So there's some funny little lacy bits along the edge of this leaf and little stems that hold those leaves, those petals onto the flower itself. So, Again, I'm going to play around with my composition here. This leaf comes out a bit more, or this petal comes out a bit more, so I'm just going to change it. I'm not worrying about the fact that I'm drawing over top of other lines because a lot of this will um, become a moot point once I get going with my markers. So this is, again, I'm going to just uh, give this a moment to draw. I'm going to actually draw some leaves down here because if I go in right now, I guess maybe it's good to actually demo this for you. There's a good chance that, yeah, it's a little hard to see there, but it's activating the, um, I'm gonna hold this up. No, nope. hold on, here we go, there right. Um, it's activating the promar or the, sorry, the fine liner in there so that it's a little bit um, grayed with that fine liner. And if that's not what I want, then I'm going to let it dry first so that the fine liner doesn't affect that. Um, or I'm going to work inside of the fine liner and uh, try as much as I can not to touch it until it is dry. But if you want to use that to help create um, different shadows or shadow shapes in your in your work, then you could absolutely do that. It could be a very helpful tool for you for that. I know when I'm out sketching, um, on site, I often like to use that just to put in some quick shadow forms um, with a water brush or something, which is kind of the same as what I'm doing here with this um, marker over top of it. So I got down, a little bit better. Um, I've got down what is actually a pretty good yellow base. I'm gonna go in a bit now with my series and just play at getting some of those um, some of the feel of the darker oranges that are going on in there. And again, I'm paying attention to the direction that some of these, these marks are going in that are on the actual flower itself. Um, and I can, I can play with where the colors go to. It doesn't have to be exact to the flower itself. Um, Again, because no one's ever really probably going to see your flower and your picture together unless you're photographing them and putting them on social media, which you might want to do. In that case, you may want to be a bit more, a bit more precise um, or not, as you wish. So again, I'm just going in here and I'm layering to get a bit more depth in the color that's going on there. And now I'm going to go in with my green. I've got my leaf green here. I'm just going to add a bit of it in in different places so that it gives a bit of a sense of unity to my work. And it's not just all in the stem. I'm just coming in here to for the stem.
now. Um, I was talking to you guys before about blenders. So I think now is probably a good time to show you that once I track my blender down. It seems to have gone AWOL here, just one moment. If I can find it, it might be a little bit later. We'll see. Couldn't have gotten this far. Well, very mysterious guys. Sorry about this. Ah, there it is. Okay, perfect. Um, so again, you can, if you want to get gradients on some of this, for instance, if I wanted to pull out a gradient on this green, where it's still wet, this works best when it's wet, really wet, um, so that you can keep it moving. I'm going to take my green and just play around in there. And again, pull out a fine gradient with my with my blender. Um, if I wanted a slightly lighter green, like for instance, if I was looking at the inside of this leaf and I didn't want the dark, dark green or the darkish green that I've got going on here, I might just pick up a little bit of this and then go in and just give that a bit of a tint. And again, I could do that over and over, just pulling a bit of the, the green ink out of that and playing around then in that space that has been saturated with the blender to help create a gradient in the leaf that I'm working on. And you can get lots of interesting and different effects out of this. So, um, it's fun to really play with that and just see. Again, right now it's bleeding a little bit interestingly because of the blender. So that's giving me an other effect. Um, one second here. So these are some of the possibilities. Um, we don't have one in our kit today, but what's always a good idea is having something that's a little grayish or light bluish in your kit. Um, it helps to create a little bit of a sense of shadow. You can change the, um, the shade of something if you want. So again, if I wanted it to be a bit darker in there, just a little gray um, goes a long way. Um, in creating depth in uh, in building up your sketch that you're doing. Okay, so you can see this is one nasturtium um, done in this way. Now, I draw most of what I've seen here, but other things I could add in after the fact is just going in and playing a bit with adding in some more of the colors in different places to make it interesting. Um, again, it doesn't have to be true to the flower itself. Once you've gotten to a certain point and you're satisfied with your drawing, then you can really just go in and have fun with it and see what's possible in the, in the space that you've created. And again, I might even want to go in and put a little bit of this lovely cerise down the stem, or maybe I want to go over here and play around with it. Um, there's lots of possibilities with the different colors you're working with and the, um, the different mark making that you can do with that. Um, again, you can really build up, if you want, your darks quite a bit just by going in with your fine liner and pushing those. You can build up a bit more visual texture as well this way. Again, I'm not super happy with that leaf. So maybe I'm going to go and give that same treatment to all of my petals so that um, that is less visible on its own. Another way to play if things don't go quite the way you want in your, in your sketch. So this is again, changed quite a bit. And it all depends on what kind of look you're going for. 
again, thanks to the thanks to the layering capability of all of this. Um, you really can do all kinds of things here. I'm just gonna take the spotlight off that for you. Um, so how are your drawings coming along guys? Are any of you drawing along right now? Yeah, does anyone want to show their work? You don't have to, it's not mandatory, but if you would like to. Oh, beautiful. Wow, way to go, you guys. Those are lovely. Um, so yeah, so I really like working with this uh, as a medium. It's very interesting. Again, I find having a color chart like this nearby is really helpful because then if I'm, I'm looking, it takes me a bit less time when I'm looking through my markers, especially if I have a bunch of them around to know what it is, sorry, that light's a little bright on here, um, what it is I'm looking for. And same thing if I'm working with uh, fine liners, it's good to have a chart of the various line weights that you can get out of that. So today we're working with the 1.0, but it goes all the way down to a 0.1, which is really fine and allows you, again, a different kind of um, finesse in your line work. You can get a lot of different weights of line work, even just out of the 1.0 that we're working with. Um, but even if I find in my kit when I'm traveling and I'm sketching or uh, just generally working, I like to have one of the larger ones like the 1.0 and then something like a 0.1 or a 0.3 in my kit, just so that I can really get quite a difference in the line weights um, between those two different options that I have with me. And I think that that kind of brings us to the end of my demo more or less. Do you guys want to pop into a question session? Yeah, so we can definitely do a question session right now. So uh, now would be a good time to unmute yourselves if you wanted to ask a question. Uh, if you don't have a mic, a mic or don't want to use your voice, you can just put it in the chat. And then again, me and Annie. We'll go through them and then read them out. And I'm going to just remove my pin here so I can see all of you guys. I'm on my spotlight. There we go. Okay. First off, how did you guys find this today? Were there things that you found really interesting? Um, things that you learned that you thought were useful? I'm gonna just pop into the chat. Uh, thanks for the hard charity. <laughs> yeah. um, does anybody have any questions about the techniques that I've gone over? Things that might be is there a right side to the marker paper? Yes, one hundred percent. So that's a really good question, actually. So when you open your marker pad, um, it is going to be the one that's up on top here, um, not not the other side. They accept the um, they accept the marker slightly differently. So just always make sure you know which side is up on your marker pad, and you're good to go. Uh, is there any way, other way to notice that? Uh, say you had like, because I'm pretty sure we sent out individual sheets of paper. So is there a certain way that you can figure yeah. that out? So if it's out? What I would say here, and I don't know again if this is going to be super, you can kind of see that there's a sheen on the back of that and it's a bit matter on the front. Um, it's what I would say to you about that. To the touch, again, the back feels a bit, um, a bit softer and the front is a little just a little bit less um, smooth. But it's not as it's not as noticeable, I would say, as like say watercolor paper or something like that. Hmm. So if you're taking it out of your pad and you're going to be working with it someplace and you're just folding up a paper to like bring with you and sketch the metro or whatever, you might want to put just a little X on the top side so you know. Um, or on the underside, if you prefer, so no one will see that. Um, that's a good way to just kind of, uh, I'm going to just move these flowers over there. They're taking over here. 
Uh, it's a good way to denote which side is which so that you so that you know. No, she's just listening. Yeah, any other questions, guys? If ever you don't think of them right away, please do feel free to touch them with me later. Um, or, uh, or leave questions with the girls and they can hand them along to me too. I'm happy to answer whatever you need answered. Quiet group. So yeah, again, I would I would encourage you guys to just um, take some time and head out into your flower gardens or head out into one of the local parks and do some more tests with these with different um, with different flora that you might find out find around your region because um, it's it's a really uh, it's a fun and very portable tool, especially for sketching in the summertime like we've got right now. Um, a few colors can take quite a long ways. Um, I know personally when I'm traveling, I really like to have a small kit with me. Oftentimes it's watercolor, but this is another good way to go um, with your one, one or two fine liners and a small marker kit. It's very easy to just get in some lights and darks and record what you're, what you're seeing as you travel, which is really nice. Um, I'm assuming I, it's less messy. I just had to, I do a lot of mixed media and a lot of collage. So I'm curious as to how these who work in a mixed environment, like even with media, with the medium that you use to collage, can you use these over acrylic medium? I mean, there'd be no reason not to try, Jane, I would say. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I've tried them over top of acrylic mediums or not, but I think I now need to go and do that. <laughs> um, but again, experimentation is the key to this. So like, Put some down in your sketchbook and take the ones that you've gotten today and go over top of the mediums. Um, what I would say I know is that sometimes when I've worked, because um, I oftentimes have worked over top of acrylic or other things with the fine liners, and sometimes there's something about the film on an acrylic that can kind of bog up the end of your um, tip tip over time, not right away. It takes a while, but it does happen. And the, the yeah. same might be true with the markers. That would be the only thing I would say about that in terms of working with the markers and acrylic, but I can't say for sure because right. I haven't done enough experimentation, but experimentation would be key with that. That's fair. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Other questions, guys, don't be shy. I didn't like how the um, black markers, it didn't seem as if it ever dried enough. And when you put the alcohol egg on it, then it smudged. Do yeah. you recommend anything else? Um, you could work with pencils. Uh, ballpoint pen would probably be fine too. Although again, I'd be very careful when just, just in terms of drawing on the marker paper because it is a bit finer. Um, you could mix any number of things with this, but yeah, the, the fine liners, um, on this paper, they don't dry as well as say they would on a on a watercolor or something else. They they do end up tending to be a little bit more movable on the on the bleed proof paper. So if you gave it time, for example, you did your your fine line sketch first and then waited a day and then did that. Would it does it just need more time to dry? I think so. Honestly, I would say like we were doing things pretty quickly here today. Um, but I know like when I'm when I'm working with these, and again, I tend to be mostly working with a koi brush with these when I'm out sketching. Um, I find usually in the first two minutes, you can still move it. And then after that, it seems to set. Now, I would say that the open time on this paper is a little bit longer. Uh, and I'm not sure why that is exactly. I think it probably just has to do with the makeup of the paper. But I would say, yeah, if you gave it even like 10 minutes maybe or something like that, and then just let it sit and dry and went over top of it with your markers, you would probably be fine. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. I don't think you need to wait a whole day or anything like that. I think it's just a question of like finding what that perfect amount of time is by testing it out. Good to know. Other questions, guys? Yeah. 
or does anybody have grand plans for their markers after this they'd like to share? Mm -hmm. Sorry, what was the name of the paper again? I didn't write it down. Okay, so the paper is Windsor Newton High Quality Bleed Proof Marker Paper. So again, high quality bleed proof marker paper. And the packaging looks like this. So it has a kind of graffiti-esque abstract corner to it and the rest of it is black with white font. Great. Yeah. I'll put this up under the, um, under the camera so you guys can see it up there if you want. So yeah, again, I mean, if you're if you're looking to add your kit, I would recommend the blender because it'll allow you to get um, some some different uh, shades and tones out of things that you wouldn't otherwise. Um, and things that didn't come in your kit, obviously, a smaller a smaller fine liner would be good, um, and possibly a blue. Those those three things would probably allow you to do quite a lot, uh, even beyond what we've what we've done today and what you're able to do with what you've got. Uh, so if anyone missed it, uh, Annie just uh, updated the chat with the bleed proof marker pad that above Grand Carries. Uh, so if you are nearby or want to order one online, that's just a direct link to the marker pad, but feel free to look through all of the markers and see if you want it blue or um, the blender as we were talking about it seems really interesting. Yeah, thank you so much all of you for um coming out and watching the demo today and participating. Um, it's been really nice seeing your sketches. And uh, if ever you, again, if ever you feel like um, sharing any of your pieces on, uh, I don't know, of you guys, maybe on Facebook even, right? Uh, yeah, we are. Yeah, so you could share some of your pieces maybe over on Facebook if there's, if you're able to get the demo over there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, a lot of, you might have already gotten the coupon, but we are sending out a coupon for the Winter Newton collection. So uh, if you haven't got that yet, check your email. Uh, it should be there by four o'clock max, um, but it might have already sent out early. Um, so you guys can look around on the website and see what you like from the Winter Newton collection. Maybe you want to get that blender or that light blue. Um, and then on that note, if no one else has any more questions, I think we can end off this demo. Uh, thank you so much for doing the demo. It was super interesting and seeing Thanks the actual pieces. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, you guys. Yeah, yeah bye, bye everyone. Thank you.